Five things that will surprise you when programming embedded devices, such as this little chip here. My name is Janos, I've built my own electric cars, and for this, I dove deep into embedded programming. What took me months and months to learn, you're gonna see in the next five minutes. The points we're gonna discuss are, memory is pre-allocated rather than allocated at the runtime. A one isn't always a one, sometimes it's a zero. Input filtering is important. Embedded programmers are reckless when it comes to modifying other people's libraries. The feedback loop can be much longer, which is a big problem. And lastly, destroying hardware is normal. All right, let's look at these in detail now. One thing that really surprised me was the feedback loop length. So typically, if you write business software, you're gonna be able to test it locally and you make a modification to the code, uh, maybe you compile the code or you, you just run it um, and you run the test and within a minute or two, you're gonna be able to, um, you're able to see results. You're gonna be able to see if you improved the code or if you, if you um, deteriorated it, right? And you can revert it and um, make your change. In embedded programming, these things take longer. Sure, you can have a short feedback loop in loading your code onto the chip, but sometimes that chip needs to be in uh, an environment and um, you, you physically have to move it from your desk uh, to the test piece. And that's gonna take a lot of time. And my recommendation there is, if you can find ways to test as much of your code with a short feedback loop, you're gonna be much faster at developing it. So the second one is, I just said reverting your code. Reverting in hardware is not necessarily possible because uh, you're able to destroy hardware quite easily. Um, so something that I learned is you figure out quite quickly what are the expensive components that you're working with and what are the cheap components that you're working with. And if you've got cheap components that are easy to destroy, um, you want to optimize to for them to break before you break the expensive thing, to sacrifice themselves before uh, another component uh, blows that it's not as easy to 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 replace. Um, and the other one is yeah, you don't have you don't have git revert or anything like that. So sometimes you want to have a few in stock. Otherwise, you destroy your circuit board and realize you can't work for a day or two until the new device comes. All right, that was number two. Um, another one is um, that I found very surprising from you know writing business software, uh, going to embedded software is how other developers are treating libraries. If you're writing like a Python application or a Ruby application or something like that, you would never modify a library. You would always like patch it with some magic around it. You would import it, leave the library as it is and load the newest library. What embedded programmers are doing is they pull the whole library into their code or sometimes they would just copy and paste um, the methods that they need and just modify uh, the methods straight in the library because it's their code, it's their hardware and it's rare for them to you know, build environments from scratch, like you would do in any SaaS startup or you know, web application or something like that. All right, that was number three. Another one, uh, number four, is analog input filtering. So I had a bunch of code and I was relying on a switch to go from zero to one, and if this switch is one, if this flag is one, I want my code to do one thing, and if the flag is zero, I want to do the other thing. And then I started seeing strange behavior in my embedded code. And then I realized that a one is not necessarily one in analog and an embedded, and a zero isn't necessarily zero in embedded and analog applications. So what happened is you've got some sort of noise on the line. So you read one, 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 and then a quick zero, and then one, 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 one. And that would throw your code off essentially. And the fix for that is uh, filtering or smoothing of the input. So what happens is often on the chip level or on a hardware level, you're able to set a flag to say, oh, I don't want the, I don't want the signal just in this one point of time. I want the uh, signal smoothed over. I want the average of, of uh, a certain amount of time. And I want the one or the zero from that. And then your code works. So input filtering was something that I had to learn when I started learning about embedded. All right, and then the last one that I learned about was uh, memory allocation. What is very, very common in uh, embedded systems is to pre-allocate all the memory that you need at the start and then that's all you use. So in a web application or like some sort of accounting software, you would like reallocate new variables all the time and throw them away and throw them around and send them from one thread to the other or God knows what. Um, in embedded applications, we've got limited memory. It's quite common to look at the memory map and go, okay, this section here, I'm gonna use for those variables. This section here, I'm gonna use for that data structure. And then this section here, I don't know, maybe some more variables or whatnot. And then that's it. And then you turn the device on and you never have a, a malloc 
call or anything like that. There's no new memory being allocated. So these were some quick things that surprised me when I got into embedded programming from um, you know Python pro programming and writing business logic. Just to recap, the faster feedback loop, uh, it's much slower and embedded if you're not careful. Um, it's easy to destroy devices. Um, you want to maybe optimize for the how expensive the devices are and see if um, you can you can save some of the cheap ones uh, so, so you smoke them instead of instead of the expensive ones. And destroying devices is quite normal in embedded software development. Analog input filtering: a one is not necessarily one, a zero isn't necessarily zero. You need to take averages sometimes. People are really reckless with libraries, or what seemed to me reckless. Um, and then the last one, uh, memory allocation is quite common to allocate memory uh, statically at the beginning of a program. Those were just a few things that I learned when I started better programming. Um, I hope this helped someone. See you around.